morning. Uh, we're glad to see your smiling faces. Amen. We are, uh, got a couple of things that we want to acknowledge. We're thanking the Lord for those of you who helped in our uh, moving and resettling. Amen. We moved everything out and we put everything back. I want to thank God for, for all of your labor. Amen. We could, definitely couldn't have done it without your labor and without your support. I understand everybody pitched in. Uh, last Sunday did a great job pitching in, great job of teamwork. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Also, I want to thank you on behalf of my wife and myself. I want to thank you all for coming over to the housewarming and birthday celebration. We had a great time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm just grateful to the Lord that you were able to share with us and in, in the blessing that the Lord allowed us to receive. Amen. And we appreciate all of your housewarming gifts and your birthday gifts. And most importantly, we appreciate your presence helping us just to bless the Lord and have a good old good time. Amen. We had a good time. And my, when my neighbor said, y'all had a good party over there, I said, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So that's good. That's good. That's good. I also want to thank Bishop Ussery for filling in last Sunday. Amen. Praise God for my pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now next week, is well this week is a busy week Amen. this week uh, we have our Central California District Council and on the council actually starts on Monday the men's portion will be at Bethlehem Temple on Monday and then from Tuesday to Friday we will be hosting the conference here from Tuesday to Friday so we need I'm not a Navy man, but I can use this expression. All hands on deck. <laughs> Amen. We need you in your places with smiles on your faces. Amen. And exuding all of God's graciousness. Amen. Amen. So we can, we can uh, uh, serve with excellence and serve with graciousness. We want to just let you know that our own uh, Suffragan Bishop Ussery will be the evening speaker for Tuesday night. Amen. 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 So we want, you, we want, we want to have the most people here. Amen. Um, Tuesday is the Women's Day. They have events going on throughout the day. But we want you, if you can avail yourselves, to come. But especially, we want you to come and support our emeritus pastor. Amen. All right. Uh, we got a note here that Holy Communion will be with Bishop Ellis on Friday afternoon, our presider, and also he is our evening speaker for Friday, Friday evening, all right? So we need all ministry workers, we need all volunteers, all right? This is a chance for us to, to uh, shine for God. So let's shine for God, amen? Amen. Uh, if you, I also want to mention that I spoke with uh, our senior assistant pastor, uh, El Talbert, yesterday evening, and he said he's doing pretty well. He said he loves and misses everybody. He had planned to try to make it down for our conference, but he told me he won't be able to make it uh, this time. But he's, he said he's doing well, but he also asked that we pray for his wife. His wife has health challenges also, and she needs our prayer, so we want to lift up. Sister Talbert in our prayers. I told him that I would share it with the congregation. Amen. So lift them both up in prayer, but he's especially asking for prayer for his wife. Amen. All right. Continue to pray for those who are going through health challenges. Amen. That God will intervene because we know that he's able. Amen. So lift up Brother Eric Norville. Lift up, uh, lift up uh, Mother uh, Flora McNeil. Continue to pray for Brother Henderson, continue to pray for Brother John Pegg, amen, those who are going through medical challenges, amen, because God is able, 
Amen. He is able. Yes, thank you. Continue to pray for Dolores, Sister Dolores Jackson. Amen. Martha Boma. Amen. Amen. Say again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Send a hallelujah up with your prayer. Amen. Amen. Because we pray with anticipation that God hears and answers. Amen. So we, we can always praise him in, even in our prayer. Amen. Amen. And pray for one another. Amen. Uh, and pray uh, that we are uh, safe in this heat and safe in this summer. Amen. Summertime is the time when the enemy would like to pop up his head and try to disrupt stuff. Amen. But we come against them in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So now uh, after dismissal, we have treats and eats. All right. And since we have just finished beautifying our congregation, I just want to make a housekeeping announcement. All right. When we have our treats and eats, let's sit down and eat. All right. Let's not travel and eat. Amen. Sit at a table and eat in the designated areas that will help us to maintain our cleansiness of our facility. Amen. Amen. It's just a housekeeping uh, thing. Water only in the sanctuary. All right. Water only in the sanctuary. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. What else I got here? Treats and eats. All right. 1230. Man cave. All right, and this coming Saturday at 11 a.m., we have our food giveaway. So we need volunteers by 9 a.m., all right? All right, amen. Okay, now at this portion, we want to uh, acknowledge the jubilant and joyous people who have the blessed and awesome opportunity. Come on, come on, you know I'm going to put something on it. I'm going to put something on it. Uh, to be born in the best month to be born. The best month. Yes. Yeah. Because, see, when you look at July, we're joyous. We're unique. We're lovely. And we're yet going on. That's the July. So for those who are blessed and highly favored and exceptionally joyous to be born in the month of July, we're going to sing happy birthday. All right. Just so happens that I'm born in the month of July. You probably guessed that already, huh? <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. One more time. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near. Every day of the year, oh, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you, and the best year you've ever had. Amen. Amen. No, no, no October. Security, get October out of here. Amen, amen. We need to celebrate life. Amen, and as God gives us an opportunity to celebrate, we need to celebrate it. Amen. I'm, I'm so happy and honored to be born in the same month as my pastor. I started off and she, and she closes it out. Amen. And in fact, I found out that our presider, Bishop Ellis, is born in July also. His birthday was yesterday. Amen. All right, you got some powerful people in July. Don't mess with July. <laughs> All right. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time and you didn't get a welcome packet, if you raise your hands, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. If you're in the sanctuary, whomever you are, and you didn't receive a bulletin, if you'd like to receive a bulletin, uh, 
raise your hand and we will, we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. I want us to give God praise for the fact that last week we reached 100% of our weekly goal. <laughs> Thankful to the Lord for that. Amen. So we're going to continue to worship the Lord and we're going to worship him in our giving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. Amen. Also, I want to let you know that on the fifth, on the fifth Sunday, the fifth Sunday will be Deacon and Sister Foster's uh, last Sunday with us. So we're going to have a little uh, celebration for them uh, on the end of our, at the end of our service. Amen. So we want you to come and just be a part of that celebration. All right. All right, um, as is our custom, as is our custom as we give our tithing and offering to the Lord. And um, again, I can't overemphasize how much we appreciate your faithfulness to the Lord in your financial support of this ministry. We can't do all the things that we do uh, without your continued financial support. And we know that you're being blessed for your consistent financial support support of this ministry. This is God's work and he's uh, given us the opportunity to partner with him in kingdom business. So we appreciate every consistent, faithful giver. And we're believing God that we will, by God's grace, finish that 14,000 square feet of undeveloped space. Amen. By God's grace, we're going to get it done. Amen? Amen. So for those of you who, who have joined above your regular tithing and offering, who have joined in the Building Fund campaign, a special thanks to you. Those of you that may want to join us, we, I'll let you know that you can join us at any time. Amen. As is our custom, we would ask if you wouldn't mind standing. Those of you who are willing and able, standing with us. Hold your gifts that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand. And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our church unity prayer. We're reading this prayer and asking God's blessings upon what we're giving back to him. Let us begin. For this cause we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with your might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and the height, and that we would know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthened with all might according to your glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto you, Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom, Jesus. For it is in you we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past, in unity we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all, allowing God to get all glory, for it is he that hath made it so. God, we just thank you again for your mercy, for your kindness, for your grace, for your provision, how you provide for all of our needs, Father. We just 
I count it a privilege to worship you in our giving, Lord God. We pray that you would receive our gifts, our tithing, our offering, Lord God. Let it come up before you as an obedient act of worship and a sweet-smelling savor, Lord God. Bless the tithing and the offering in the hands of our assembly that we might meet all of our obligations and our responsibilities, Lord God, that we might continue to do your work in this part of your vineyard. Lord God, we pray that you bless every giver, Lord, that gives out of a genuine love and concern for you and for your ministry. Let your blessings overtake and surround them that they might have all that they need and that they may even have to give to those they come in contact that need, Lord God. Bless and receive our offering and tithing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You'd be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Thank you. this week. Yeah. God has been good, right? Does he not deserve our praise and our yes, worship? Yes, he does. Well, let's sing this song. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 You deserve it. Oh, my hallelujah, my hallelujah. 
Hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, yeah. my hallelujah belongs to you. Lord, my hallelujah, yeah. my hallelujah belongs to you. Then we simply say, you deserve it. You deserve it. Everything I owe you, Lord, it belongs. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, yeah. yeah. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord. All of the glory belongs.
Amen. We thank God for his goodness, for his grace, and for his mercy. You know, God, sometimes he just drops little thoughts in my mind. And as we were finishing that, the, the thought came to my mind, my whole existence belongs to you. My whole existence belongs to you. Amen. Because of God, because of who he is, we are who we are by his grace and his graciousness. Amen. I'd like to talk this morning uh, from the thought, chosen to glorify God. Chosen to glorify God. Oftentimes in society, um, in different ages of society, the question, the question may come up in different ways of phrasing it and people uh, live out different ways of seeking, why am I here? Oftentimes, uh, years are wasted away, uh, a certain amount of years, on individuals trying to find themselves. Uh, or try to find the meaning of their existence or the purpose of their existence. And valuable human resource is squandered sometimes because people really uh, are in a search to have some type of a meaning for their life or meaning for their existence or what, 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 what does it all add up to? And uh, there are many vices that intercept people on their searches. This is why I believe it's so important that the gospel of Jesus Christ be declared uh, so men and women can secure and find out and get to know their real purpose for existing. And this is kind of where my mind uh, is in this moment. I was looking in 1 Corinthians, in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, and uh, just a little back, a little background. Uh, Corinth, uh, there were some things going on in the Corinthian church, and they were faced with uh, a lot of problems. And uh, Paul writing this letter to the saints at Corinth, and we can actually, some of the, some of the problems and issues, I believe we can find them even in today's time. Uh, and specifically, there's one problem that we're gonna bring up. We can find it in the church today. And that one problem that Paul addressed, one of the problems that he addressed and one I like to just bring out is there was a egocentric problem. There was an egocentric problem. People were, had big egos and they were not Jesus-centric but they were egocentric. And any time we're egocentric, plenty problems come. Plenty problems come. Uh, so Paul writing this letter to the saints at Corinth, and he lets them know certain things about who they were and who they were basically when God called them. Um, we know from scripture that the flesh is at enmity with the spirit of God and they can never agree and we always have to keep our flesh in check we always have to 
as scripture tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 6, I'm sorry, 26 for us today, Paul is, we're, we're getting into the conversation and Paul says something here in the Amplified Version, beginning at verse 26. He says, for simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble birth. So we see that as far as the world standard, God didn't pick the cream of the crop. God didn't pick those who had a lot of influence. He didn't call those who had a lot of influence. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't pick those who were humanly born of high and noble birth. So this right here should take some of the air out of the eagle balloon that some of our brothers and sisters and the church at Corinth were dealing with. But in verse 27, he said, no, for God selected, he deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. So we see that, that it's all because of God. It's all because of God's choosing. God chooses uh, the individuals whom the world will look down on and discard and, and say that, oh, they're, they're, they're good for nothing or they are, they are uh, uh, weak people. They're, they're weak socially. They're, they're weak physically. They're weak uh, uh, economically. They're weak uh, even mentally because oftentimes some of the rebuttal that we, that we may hear sometimes is you're following God because you're weak. You can't make it on your own and you need, you need God to help you. And um, the fact of the matter is we shouldn't get offended with that because that's absolutely right. Uh, but the problem is they don't know that they're in the same condition. They don't know. They think that they're doing things on their own. They're, they think that they're calling their own shots, and they think that they don't need uh, someone to help them. But I'm so glad that the gospel of Jesus Christ came to us, and we saw that we needed a Savior. And we saw that we needed somebody to help us out of our deplorable condition. And in this weak state, uh, uh, according to the world, God, uh, he picked us. He picked us uh, and he called us. So then uh, he said in verse 28, and God also selected, he deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that he might this, he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are. Only God can do that. I glor I'm glorying in God right now <laughs> just for his wisdom, his might, and his power to pick us. <laughs> Amen. To call us. He, he, he deliberately chose us, what the scripture says. Then he, verse 29, so that no mortal man, no mortal man, should have pretense for glorying and boast in the presence of God. We can't boast in the presence of God. We can't even pr uh, pretend to have any right to say that we were all that and we were basically doing God a favor to come into his kingdom. We were lost and we were on our way to certain destruction and eternal damnation when God called us. So I'm thankful to the Lord that he called us. But here's what he says in verse 29. I'm sorry, in verse number 30. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ Jesus, 
whom God made our wisdom from God, revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden, manifested itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy and our redemption, providing our ransom from eternal penalty for sin. Look what God did in calling us. Look what God did in choosing us. He called us uh, while we were, the Bible lets us know uh, in Romans that while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. The Bible also lets us know that the Lamb of God was slain, talking about Jesus here, from the foundation of the world. So this calling that we have of God, this choosing that we have of God, this, this, this deliberate selecting that God deliberately selected us out before the foundation of the world, before we knew who we were, God chose us to glorify him. God chose us who were not educated. God chose us uh, who, who were not born on the high side of society and then God uh, in his saving power allowed us to hear the glorious gospel of our salvation and he sent us the faith to believe what he sent to us and then when we exercise uh, that faith he gave us the blessed benefit of full salvation. He gave us the blessed benefit of remission uh, of our sins. He gave us the faith and the confidence to obey his holy word and we got and we repented uh, of our sins and we got baptized uh, in his name he washed away all of our sins and God uh, fulfilled his precious promise that he made long before we got here he filled us with the precious gift uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, this calling that we received from God it was a complete calling uh, it wasn't in part but it was a complete calling and God has has the power and he exerts his power in every one of us whom he fills with his precious Holy Ghost. What a calling. What a privilege. What an honor to be called by God. To be chosen by God. And, and, and we have to understand that yes it's an honor. Yes it's a privilege. Yes it's a blessing to be called. To be chosen. To be hand picked by God. But it's not something that we should uh, 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 brag about as humans brag about. This should be no sense of arrogance uh, that God called us because what really did we have to offer God when he called us? Uh, but God uh, is so gracious and kind uh, that he said, I'm going to make something uh, out of you. I'm going to make something uh, out of these people. Just remember uh, when he talked to our brothers, uh, uh, the children of Israel back in biblical uh, history days, he said, I didn't choose you because you were so great, but I chose you because you were nothing. Uh, you, were, you were the least of all nations uh, but look what God can do with the least uh, of people look what God can do uh, with the least of all nations look what God can do with little old us uh, if we yield and when we yield ourselves to him God uh, can work in us and God can work through us and God uh, can work with us to, to carry out his plan and, and God uh, uh, can impact the lives. He can use us uh, as he leads us uh, by his spirit. He can use us uh, to impact the lives uh, of everybody that we come in contact with if we are willing uh, 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 to allow ourselves to be totally consumed by his spirit, to be totally led uh, by his spirit. And yes, uh, it costs us some things uh, to be used like that but God listen he understands what he's doing and everything that he has designed for us he designed it for our good and he designed it for his glory so he said I chose you uh, so that you can bring glory unto me so there was a problem there was a problem uh, uh, even even in the even in the early church when when different leaders would would uh, pop up and they'd say, I'm of Apollos and, and I'm of Paul and I'm of Peter. That's the wrong mindset because that, that, that fosters uh, 
ego to be inflated. And God uh, uh, doesn't like for us uh, to walk around with inflated egos. Uh, uh, God, I hear the Bible say, God resisteth the proud, uh, but he gives grace uh, unto the humble. Uh, so all the strength uh, that we have, uh, all the ability that we have, all the intelligence uh, that we have, Guess where we got it? You ain't got to guess. Uh, we know where we got it from, but we got it from God. Uh, so any ability or any intellect or any creativity or any skill uh, that we have, uh, that was given to us by God. Uh, that gift was given to us by God, and then God gave us the wisdom to develop the gifts. Uh, he gives gifts liberally, but he gives us the wisdom uh, uh, to develop those gifts. So we should not be carried away with our uh, uh, abilities and talents or whatever because we know and recognize that it came from God. We didn't, they didn't originate with us. You see? And the gifts and the talents that we have received, they're to be used for the kingdom of God, for the advancement of the kingdom of God, for the edification of the entire body of Christ. So, so, so Paul, Paul uh, was trying to let our brethren uh, the the saints at Corinth to know uh, uh, that, listen, ego has to go. Ego has to go. God is our wisdom. Everything that we need, we can get it from God. God uh, is our righteousness. He is our righteousness. Uh, God uh, is our sanctification or consecration. We get that all from God. Uh, and he is uh, our redemption. I'm so glad uh, that we are redeemed. Uh, we're redeemed. Uh -huh. We have a song uh, that the angels can't even sing. Uh, so in verse number 31, uh, Paul says, So then, as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices and glories, boast and proudly rejoice and glory in the Lord. Paul said, enough of you trying to make a, a name for yourself. Not everybody, but those who were dealing with this issue and dealing with this problem. You got to watch. Uh, uh, you're trying to put your name out there and, and, and pump your name up and, and, and get a crowd uh, behind you. Then you're not giving glory to God. And we have to understand that God is a jealous God. And he said he will not give his glory to another. So if we try to take credit for this and credit for that, that we're standing on some dangerous ground. We have been chosen to, to glorify God. Well, how, how, how then? How can I glorify God? I, I have to glorify God in my body because the scripture lets me know that we've been bought with a price. I am not my own. Do we not realize? Yes, we do, but sometimes we have to be reminded that we are not our own. God owns us because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus, we sing, Jesus paid it all. And the scripture lets us know that he shed his blood on Calvary for us. He took our place on the cross. Well, he took the place because we couldn't even go to the cross because our blood was tainted. Our blood was contaminated. All human blood was contaminated because of sin. So no, he didn't take our place. He took the right place because with no human being qualified to go to the cross. So the only one who can go to the cross was Jesus Christ. Christ because if there had been another he would have went maybe but he was sinful so there was only one person who could take the place and go on the cross and that is Jesus the Christ and I'm so glad that he did he died for our sins he died for the sins of all mankind and he bought us that means he owns us that means we are his property a lot of us don't like to think like that because there's some ramifications that go with that if we own something do we have the power and the authority to do whatever we want with it and we will uh, chastise and argue and confront anybody that tries to intercept or intervene on something that we own, especially if we paid for it with our own money, right? And how dare you to tell me what I can do with my stuff. Uh, so we see the human reasoning with that. So now let's flip this now and look at the divine reasoning. How dare we, the ones who have been bought by Christ, who have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, have been chosen by God, how dare we tell God what he can do with his own property? 
but we do sometimes. In our actions, in our deeds, we tell God what we will do <laughs> and what we won't do. We forget that we were chosen to, to glorify God. Hard pills will swallow sometimes, but swallow it nonetheless uh, because there's some great benefits uh, in being chosen by God. Uh, what are the benefits? Okay, what are the benefits? Uh, listen, uh, here's what Jesus said in one place. He said, no man can pluck us out of his hand. So I'd rather be chosen by God uh, and be in the hand of God so no matter what, happens in my life, uh, I know that I'm in the hand of God. That's the safest place to be in the universe, uh, is in uh, the hand of God. Uh, so, with, uh oh, the same hand that chose me uh, was connected to the same strong arm uh, that brought salvation, and now that's the hand that I'm resting in? That's the best place for me to be on this side or the other side of eternity is in the hand of God. And God said, can nobody take us out? I'm glad I'm chosen. So now, so now when I remind myself of that, then I think uh, uh, it, it would behoove me to give glory to God. <laughs> it would behoove me to live my life uh, uh, that will bring glory to him. Uh, it would behoove me uh, uh, to set a watch uh, at my mouth. Uh, it would behoove me uh, to bring every thought uh, uh, into captivity and to, and to the obedience uh, of Jesus Christ. It would behoove me to walk circumspectly. Uh, it would behoove me uh, uh, to ponder my goings. It would behoove me then to yield uh, unto the Spirit of God uh, that's in me because I hear God said in his word that the steps of a good man uh, are ordered by the Lord. He also said that they that are led uh, by the Spirit of God, uh, they are the sons of God. So God has chosen us uh, as sons and that's who we are. That's who we really are. He's chosen us as sons and he's chosen us uh, to bring glory to his name. And there are benefits uh, again uh, of being being chosen. Remember uh, in Jesus' ministry when he sent out uh, his disciples and he sent them out to do ministry and they came back rejoicing because even the devils uh, were subject to us uh, in your name. God, you know, so I, you got to be careful with that uh, uh, because they, see, 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 we can't give the flesh an inch. Sometimes even when you're doing ministry, whatever capacity that you're doing ministry in, sometimes uh, there may be a tendency because the devil wanna, he would want to take anything and you're doing good works and people are being helped and people are being infe uh, affected and their life are being impacted uh, for good. And then, and then uh, 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 um, ego will knock and say, yeah, you the man. <laughs> yeah, oh man, you doing it. Oh, da 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 careful that's a warning careful careful so 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 the disciples came to Jesus and said even the devils uh, are subject to us uh, 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 by your name and in your name and Jesus said don't rejoice in that if you want to rejoice uh, here's what you need to rejoice in uh, that your name your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. See, you were chosen. Now, you can rejoice on the fact that you were chosen. You can rejoice on the fact that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Because, listen, if you never get chosen or if you never get on a VIP list down here, if you never get across the ropes down here, you surely want your name in the Lamb's book of life. Because when the books are opened in heaven, that's where you want to find your name. Because if you're on that guest list, glory, hallelujah, you ain't, you ain't going to have to guess. God's going to say, well done my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I chose you to go through this, and I chose you to go through that. We don't understand sometimes the path that our life has to take. We don't understand sometimes the things that intercept our lives in certain seasons. But I hear the Bible say all things, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, to them that are the called, the chosen, according to his purpose. So God, if I got to go through this uh, down here, I, let me remember, let me have a moment uh, of spiritual sanity and remember, God, you chose me. <laughs> and since you chose me, you won't discard me. So uh, I can get the mind, like Paul said in one place, uh, I can uh, do all things through Christ. Uh, that gives me the strength, uh, knowing the fact that I'm chosen by God, uh, knowing the fact that I'm in God's hand, uh, knowing the fact that God has already promised uh, that he'll never leave me 
me, nor will he forsake me, that I'm just going to walk on through here. I might have to limp through. Huh? I might have to crawl through. Huh? I might have to drag through. Huh? And sometimes all I'm going to have to do is stand. Because huh? I hear the word says, having done all, then stand. Huh? Sometimes all you can do huh, is stand. Huh? Glory, hallelujah. But I'm glad huh, that God's able to keep me from falling. Huh? So if all I can do is stand, huh? I'll just stand. Huh? And I'll lean huh, on the one who chose me. Huh? I'll depend huh, on the one huh, who chose me. I'll cry out huh, to the one who chose me. I bear my heart and I bear my soul to the one who chose me. See, because he understands me. He understands all of my idiosyncrasies. He knows my thoughts are far off. He knows what makes me go. He knows what gets my goat. He knows what gets on my nerves. He knows uh, uh, everything that just frustrates me. And he can speak peace to my situation because he's chosen us. And he's chosen us not to abandon us. He said, I will not leave you. So I'm so glad that, that he sent the comforter. He said he doesn't want us to be orphans. God said I'm coming myself in the person of the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad for the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad for the Spirit of God. When ain't nobody around God, he just shakes me on, on the inside and said, I'm still here. Yeah, it looks dark, but I'm still here. Yeah, their mouths are against you, but I'm still here. Yeah, the devil is present, uh, but I got a plan for the devil. <laughs> this is what you do. You stand on my word, uh, and sometimes all, you might not be able to get a word uh, out of your mouth, uh, and tears uh, can just be coming down uh, your face. Uh, God uh, bottles up tears. Uh, glory, hallelujah. God uh, interrogates tears. Uh, he knows the DNA uh, of tears, uh, and, some, and he even knows uh, the DNA uh, of our sighing. Uh, he maketh intercession with groanings. That's what the Bible says uh, that cannot be uttered. Uh, so God uh, understands the tears uh, and he understands the sighs uh, and he understands the groans uh, and even uh, in our tears uh, we can still bring glory to God. Uh, we might be crying, uh, we, we might cry, uh, we might groan, uh, but we ain't backing up. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, we're we going to stand still uh, and we're going to see the salvation uh, of the Lord uh, because uh, he chose us uh, and he will not abandon us. Uh, he chose us uh, that even in our infirmities, uh, glory to God, uh, even in our situations, uh, even in perplexed moments uh, of our life, uh, we can bring glory and give glory to God uh, because when the enemy sees uh, that he's throwing onslaughts uh, and, and artillery barrages uh, at our life uh, and we're moving uh, and we're standing uh, and he's scratching his head, so to speak, uh, saying, uh, I thought she would fold by now. Uh, I thought he would throw in the towel by now. Uh, but uh, we look to the word of God uh, and said the name of the Lord uh, is a strong tower. Uh, so the righteous uh, run into it. Uh, wait, uh, listen, when we, were playing, uh, when we used to play tag, uh, there was base. Uh, and the name of the Lord is our base. Uh, so we can run uh, to the strong tower uh, and we can be safe. Uh, listen, uh, we can be safe uh, because we're the righteous uh, and we run uh, to the name of the Lord. Uh, He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's our defense. He's our sovereign. He's our king. He's our victory. He's our redeemer. He is the captain of our salvation, and he chose us. He enlisted us. He picked us. Uh, he summons us uh, that we might bring him glory. So even uh, in the weakness uh, of my body, uh, even uh, in the pressure of my mind, uh, when I don't know how this uh, is going to work out, uh, and I don't know how that uh, is going to work out, uh, and I got family problems, uh, and I got legal problems, uh, and I got social problems, uh, and I got problems uh, on top of problems, uh, I will not uh, accuse God. Uh, I will uh, continue to bless God uh, because uh, not only uh, is the enemy looking, uh, people are looking. Uh, people who have yet to come in to the kingdom of God, uh, they want to see, is this thing real? Uh, God uh, don't need no fair weather saints. Uh, God didn't choose us uh, to be fair weather. God said, can you stand a storm or two uh, in your life? Uh, can you stand up uh, when the waves uh, and the billows are uh, are pressing hard against your life. 
that's what God wants. He wants somebody to stand up in the midst of the storm and say, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah, right now, in this moment, ain't nothing working like I want it to work, but I will not accuse God. I will not blame God. Ain't nothing falling for me. Ain't nothing happening like I wanted to have. I got disappointment on every hand, but one thing, one individual who has never disappointed me, and that's God Almighty. In him is my confidence. In him is my trust. I rejoice in the God of my salvation because not long he that shall come. Glory to God. He will come and his reward. Glory is with him. God got a reward for me. God has a reward for you. He got a reward down here. God's going to get you out of that situation. Either he's going to get you out or he's going to move the situation altogether. That's the kind of God uh, he is. Uh, and he chose us uh, to go through uh, some light affliction. Uh, but for a moment, uh, glory to God. Uh, but when God gets ready uh, in the fullness uh, of time, check God's track record. Uh, he always comes through uh, on time. Uh, just when we think uh, we can't stand it uh, no more. Uh, just when we think uh, all is lost. Uh, here comes God. Here comes God. A mighty God. A triumphant God. He said, I heard you when you prayed the first time, but I wanted to prove something to you. Your confidence is in me. Glory. Hallelujah. Here comes God with a blessing. A blessing of peace. A blessing of deliverance, a blessing of cons of confirmation and consolation. God will let you know you ain't crazy. You ain't crazy. You're trusting in me. Put your trust in me. God said you ain't crazy. You will not lose your mind. God said, I didn't give you the victory for you to lose it. You have the victory because I chose you. You've been chosen for victory. No quit in you because there's no quit in God and God's in you and he don't quit. So what you going to do? I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to exalt his name. I might not be able to jump and shout like I used to, but I can breathe out of praise. I might not be able to clap my hands in his presence, but I can wave something. I can wave something. And God knows what every wave means. He knows what every clap means. We've been chosen to glorify him. It would be easy if everything worked like we wanted to all the time. What glory would God get? But can you trust me? Can you glorify me in adverse situations? Can you glorify me in a desert place in your life. That's what we're chosen to do. And guess what? He's given us all things that pertain unto life and, God and godliness. So we are well able to do it. Just got to make up our minds. Make up our minds. God, I'm in it, and I'm not by myself. See, see, when we really grasp that, it'll do something. It'll do something. And, 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 and let's just be honest. The situation is uncomfortable. The situations are unpleasant. All that goes along with it. But that's not all. That's not all. 
God's in the situation with us. So he's sharing and feeling, wait, 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 we have not a high, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So he understands the unpleasantness of the situation. Yes, he does. And he's not going to discard our human feeling. God is not that type of a God. But I hear him say, my grace is sufficient. My grace. Lean on God's grace. God has an endless source of grace. He has an endless reservoir of grace, an endless fountain of grace that we can all lean in and receive from at the same time and won't diminish the grace to handle what we're going through. What a God. What a God. So we've been chosen to glorify him. And when, notice I didn't say if, when he comes through, and he will, when he comes through, don't keep it quiet. When he, when he comes through, now watch this. When God comes through, you have my permission to interrupt the regular flow of sermon. Watch this now. When God comes through, not when you come through, not when somebody you called and they work out. When God comes through, we want to rejoice with you. When God comes, not when you manipulated something and moved something from over here and moved something over there. No, 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 we ain't having that. When God comes through, because then you're going to give all the glory to God. And we're going to glorify God with you because we've been chosen to glorify God. God bless you. I'm going to stop right there. Remember that in whatever you're facing or whatever you're going to face, we've been chosen to glorify God. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you've never accepted the salvation that God has provided, we want you to know that you've been chosen to receive salvation. That's the initial way that you can glorify God, is to receive salvation, is to take full advantage of what God has given to you. Take full advantage of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Take full advantage of that. Take full advantage of him being raised from the dead according to the scriptures on the third day. Take full advantage of him ascending up into heaven. Take full advantage of him sending back the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And he did that. Now you got to make this personal. He did it for you because he had you on his mind. Because the scripture declares that God is not willing that any should perish but that all come to repentance. Repent. Have a change of heart. Change of mind. Change of direction for your life. Your life is going this way and God is that way. God says make a 180 and turn. Surrender to him. Repent. Be sorry for your sins. Know that whatever sin or sins you have committed, you committed them against God. And if you're truly sorry, if you truly have a change of heart, that's true repentance. Once you repent, we got water. We will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. God has promised in his word to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. In fact, you can get the Holy Ghost before you get in the water. Yes, you can. Faith and repentance, that's all it takes. Faith and repentance. For the promises unto you is to your children and to them that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God's still choosing. He's still calling. He's still choosing. He's still calling. Who will answer the call today? Who will move and accept God's choosing? God.
He's choosing and calling you to life eternal. Are you here this morning? If you're here, we're inviting you to come. For those of you who are viewing by live stream, we are the Apostolic Faithful and Assembly Church. We thank you for tuning in to our live broadcast. If you have a prayer request, there's a number on your screen. Call the number on your screen for the next 15 minutes. We'll have prayer counselors standing by. If we live in the Lord will, we will see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. If you're in the Los Angeles area, we will be hosting from Tuesday of this week to Friday of this week. We will be hosting the Central California District Council of the Pentecostal Sundays of the World from Tuesday to Friday. If you're in town and you make yourself available, we have uh, services in the evening at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to come in fellowship with us. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you're in the house and you have a prayer request, come now. You can come. Thank you, Jesus.